Hello. Um, when you take a group of young kids and uh, ask them uh, who they want to become when they grow older, they should usually uh, answer like a policeman, um, firefighter, or a doctor. Um, so I was always in this, in this third group. Um, you could see me with surgical cap of the top of my head. Um, I always wanted to be a doctor. So if you take a group of the people like me and ask them 15 years later, who do you want to become when you graduate from your medical school just at the age of uh, becoming, entering medical school? The answer is like internal medicine, um, ophthalmologist or surgeon. So to be boring, uh, my answer was also the third one. I always wanted to be neurosurgeon. So having this in the back of my head, uh, I founded Neurosurgery Society, uh, being uh, the second year student of Warsaw Medical University. So it was tremendous time for me. I had a huge opportunity um, to be among a team uh, that perform uh, brain surgeries. So I had the opportunity to learn about uh, the brain, how fragile it is, but on the other hand, uh, how complex the physiology of the brain is. Uh, we've been performing different research around the brain topic. Um, and once we start researching the sleep, um, we've been researching, um, the research aim was to assess how the brain damage impacts the sleep and uh, how the disturbed sleep impacts your general health condition. Um, and one day I realized during this project that this is something that I want to um, go deeper with, uh, that I don't want to be a neurosurgeon anymore, that I want to be a scientist and I want to learn more about the sleep. Fortunately, um, I found a colleague that was crazy as I, and uh, we decided to um, start working on the, our own project, to start working uh, in the company. Um, our goal was to help people sleep better. If you ask any biologist, any scientist, what is the one of the most mysterious part of human nature, human physiology, they're for sure answer sleep. If I ask you, what is sleep? It could be really simple. It's like loss of conscious. We're doing nothing for the eight hours. So we are doing nothing one third of our life, which means that we are doing nothing for 30 years of our life. So basically, scientists don't know what we are doing during, during the sleep. There are different theories. We are like wasting um, time. Um, there is a theory that we consolidation our memory. There is a time that we just cleaning the space in our brain in order to make a space for tomorrow day. Um, but our goal was to help people sleep better. If you consider Challenger explosion, if you consider Chernobyl disaster, um, or Exxon Valdez spill, all these tragedies by, was caused, were caused by sleep disturbances. People that were on duty were sleep de deprived. And, uh, this causes all these strategies. So we thought that we need to bring people like a sleep monitor in order to help them sleep better, monitor their health. So in order to move further, I need to tell you a little bit more about the sleep physiology. If you have ever used music software, like a Winamp or a uh, similar, um, you should remember this like uh, uh, jumping waves. So basically, our brain works quite the same. Um, our brain generates electrical power, and we could measure it through and categorize into different waves. There are different ways from beta to theta, and it describes how active we are or in how deep, in, in how deep sleep we are right now. So probably in, in this audience, most of you should be in the beta um, stage, or maybe you're at alpha if you think that my talk is really boring. <laughs> but it is when we are awake. When we are asleep, it's more complex. Sleep is not just regular as being awake. It's, um, there are cycles. 
So every cycle lasts for at least like 90 minutes and it consists of different stages of sleep. Light sleep, deep sleep and paradoxal sleep, which is a rapid eye movement sleep. So in order to fully describe your sleep, um, you need to describe the brain waves, categorize them, um, count how many percentage of uh, different waves are in the particular amount of time, and then you have like a um, description of the sleep. And you could show it to the specialist or you could put it into the computer software in order to generate the sleep efficiency. So currently, if we are sleep deprived, if we have problem falling asleep, we are going to hospital. And there is a golden standard called polysomnography. Like doctors taking different wires, putting all over our body, they're putting wires inside our nose, around our chest, around our belly, around our legs, and putting us asleep um, in the hospital hall. So it's not so comfortable. When we are performing some uh, research using our polysomnographs, um, my colleagues, who is rather big, um, like couldn't breathe with this all wired all over this body. So our goal was to bring medical accuracy, uh, but affordable sleep monitoring to the general audience. And uh, that's how we decide to make a neuron. So with neuron, with the sleep mask, having one channel EEG, so we have far less electrodes than the standard polysomnography, um, we started measuring sleep, putting it into the special software and uh, analyzing it through the artificial intelligence. Having this, we could go down with the amount of wires and uh, maintain quite good accuracy, so it could be useful for the physicians. Um, we started the Kickstarter campaign, we raised almost half a million dollars uh, with this idea. So after the month-long campaign, we had the money, but we had also publicity. And then we realized that measuring sleep is not enough. We want something more. We want to make people sleep better. We want to impact on people's sleep. So it's very ironical that the light that is all around us could help us sleep better, but it could also disturb our sleep. If there is too much light in the moment where shouldn't be a light at all, it's killing our sleep. And scientists discovered that if we place the pulses of the light, very short, two millisecond pulses of the light, ironically, in the middle of the night when you're asleep and when we put it into the mask, we could modulate your body clock. So if you're flying to the United States or to Asia from Europe, you have a terrible jet lag. You're like asleep in the middle of the day, you're waking up in the middle of the night, you cannot do any business or science. So imagine that we could put tiny lights inside our mask, flash your eyes when you're asleep with your eye closed and move your body clock just like this. And basically, like, our dream came true. According to Stanford University, um, to Dr. Zeisler research that was published three weeks ago, um, providing short pulses of the light in the middle of the night for one hour. So there are like two millisecond pulse every five seconds for an hour in the middle of the night, let's say 3 a.m. We could delay your body clock up to two hours. So imagine you're flying from San Francisco to New York City during the night, it's red eye flight. So you're reaching New York City in the morning and you're feeling terribly tired because like the air traveling is tired and you have a jet lag as well. So having our mask, you could just move your body clock just like this with flashing lights. So we put it all computer power that is needed to assess your sleep into like a tiny device and place it in front of your eyes. Um, we have a sensors that measuring your brain waves, eye movements, sending it into the computer software that analyze your sleep, saying if you're deep sleep or light sleep or maybe REM sleep and measuring in which 
place of sleep cycle you are in order to place an accurate light um, to, the, to the moment when we could delay or advance your body clock. So I started like a person who wants to become a doctor, but once I realized that being a doctor, I could help like 2,000 people per year. I always wanted to do something bigger, that something that has an impact on the um, whole society, that I could help like 100,000 people per year. I couldn't do just like a regular doctor. This is why I figured out that I need to create a device that could like copy me, double me, so I could impact the people um, even if I'm not around uh, through the device when I put like knowledge into little pieces of computers. Thank you very much.